for Krimo Media's policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna here to unpack his column titled, Multiple Crises Need a New Configuration of Forces. You say that the ANC has betrayed and lost the trust of its previous support base. So is that not too blanket an evaluation? Well, if you look throughout the country, the collapse of infrastructure, uh, which is happening also in wealthy areas, but it's mainly in the poorer areas, sewage running in the streets, no water, schooling interrupted all the time, and not only by load shedding, but by collapse of schools and people having to study in conditions that are very unconducive to learning. A lot of uh, violence in the schools, criminality, where pupils are being killed, uh, sometimes from inside the school, but very often from gangsters going on the schools and equipment being stolen, not proper security. Uh, the healthcare system is collapsing, especially, again, for the poor. If you look at uh, the stories of places that are hardly heard about, where people have to travel very far to get health care, and the health care provision is not adequate. So what I'm saying then is that the basic, the constituency, that is the core constituency of the ANC historically, is the one that's hardest hit, so that the various crises that we have in the country are primarily hitting the poor, although they're hitting all of us. That's why I think it's um, a new thing that uh, people who are middle class or wealthy are having their profits affected with laying out for diesel if they've got generators or having the comfort of their home interrupted by layouts for solar or diesel, or in my case, for rechargeable bulbs, which is not, not such a lot. But it, it does affect, you know, the planning of every day. When there's going to be load shedding at six, you know that you have to eat early uh, or eat with gas. And some things, if you haven't bought the right things that you can turn around in the pan, all of us are affected uh, and can't, we can't live as we did a few years ago. And how has it come about, as you suggest, that the ANC leads the good life, even when people who could be their own mothers and fathers are suffering? Yeah, you know, it's the, there's a certain insensitivity. Um, there's no offer to take a cut in salary. There's no offer to cut back on some of the facilities that they get. Now, I accept that if you are doing a particular job as a minister, you need to have permanent Wi-Fi, permanent electricity. But the question is, are they doing the job? How many of them are actually performing their jobs? So the anger that gets evoked is not an anger in principle. People would, in principle, accept that some people doing very important jobs need to be exempted from load shedding and have access to water to run the country, because they're not just running a household. They're not just running themselves. They have to run the country. But since they're not running the country, you know, you have a president who has, suppose, everyone is preoccupied with reshuffling of the cabinet, and he's taking months to do this. I mean, really, can you not sort this out in two days? I can't understand. But there's also the failure to appoint the SABC board being late for signing of the electoral amendment bill, which, according to his spokesperson, only applies to parliament. But I fear if if it's left for the president to do, he's always, you know, evaluating and evaluating and evaluating. But when the decision arises, you can't see the product of all this deliberation because the state of the nation said nothing. The ANC conference at the end of last year was empty. It was all about the elections. They continued into January. There was no careful evaluation of how you address the 
problems of the country. Consequently, we're having the same uh, remedies as we've had before, and probably they're not going to implement them if they can work. And is it correct, Raymond, to say the ANC has not got a program that speaks to people's needs, or is it not simply failure to implement? Well, uh, you know, you've got the, South Africa as the highest inequality level in the world. Now, that is something extremely dishonorable from a country that was led by liberation movement, who many of whose people gave up their lives to make this freedom. You've got unemployment probably at 45% upwards, given that they use two measures. One is the people who've given, given up uh, working that they don't always count, but that if you count them, it's 45 to 50% probably. Housing has gone backwards. There were some steps taken earlier water provision, electricity provision, um, infrastructure. People are paying much more to get to work than they were at the time of 1994. I mean, I don't want to say things are worse than under apartheid, but in some respects, they are worse. And, you know, people are saying things like things worked under apartheid, like they like to say that the trains ran under Mussolini's fascism. Now, it's very sad if one can say that very many of these things were working under party. They don't work now. And I think it's because people are stealing. That's where they focused. Or they, and you see, now they're going to say to me, uh, lay a charge and all this. But the evidence is there in the Zondo Commission. Every day you can see evidence of uh, failed prosecutions, failed uh, policing, not because there's not this, these crimes, but because the processes are also not working. People manage to steal, but the people who are supposed to catch them and prosecute them are not performing adequately. And lastly, you speak of the need for a new configuration of forces, something for which you have repeatedly called. So how will it come about if it happens at all? See, the problem is that I am now old man and I'm sitting and writing these things from my computer. I'm not able to go and work as I used to work in the 1980s in the townships and in the cities or the rural areas. I don't have that capacity. I do try to reach people. Sometimes they don't uh, respond to me. I was very surprised that one of these religious groups who had um, xenophobia as a key element of their program uh, said they would come back to me. And six months later, I wrote to them and I said, look, you never did come back to me. Now I'm not able to engage the way I wanted to do because I've undertaken other things. So it's very really hard. Let's say I've got an idea but I can't implement it. So I try to influence, and there are others who are making similar calls, like Bishop Mahoba uh, and uh, Mike Sanuma did in the Sunday Times. And I think it's something which requires a number of organizations to take stock of what they're doing and take stock of what others are doing that is similar and try and join together with them, especially to join together people who have not been together in the past. Now, that's a very, very important thing because I've mentioned business as being very important, but when I speak to people in business, they prefer to have access to government rather than to be in an organizational force that tries to pressurize government to do its job or to, to have the job done in other ways as organizations like Gift of the Givers do. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krumah Media's polity about multiple crises need a new configuration of forces.